Oh my, this is a book to revisit. It's called Wink Art. Wink means you've got to close one of your eyes. Well, you don't need to do that on camera because all these effects, if you made them, would work anyway without you having to close one of the eyes. It was um, devised and invented, in fact, by Jerry Andrews, who I've known for many years. He's, he's passed away now, about oh, 10 or 15 years ago, but he was a, a wonderfully inventive Canadian magician, cardman, and a maker of optical illusions, too. And he did some fantastic work in creating this book. And I've had this in my collection for many years and had so much fun making these models. You see that the way they've made the book, you're supposed to not photocopy it, but just destroy the book. You've got to cut that out and make the models and make those extraordinary effects. But the first page, he's actually made the model for you. So here's the one that works immediately without having to make anything like this. If I, um, if I just leave it like that, you can't see very much. It doesn't, nothing seems to happen. It's very obviously a hollow, a hollow sort of the edge of a box, but if I flatten it like that, and we try and say, try blinking a couple of times, blink, blink, and suddenly it pops into view, and your brain reinterprets it as a crate, a yellow crate sitting on this checkered board underneath, and when I relax this, it disappears again, and sometimes if you blink a second time, it disappears again, so I'll do that again, get it really flat, the proportions are all now as they should be, try blink, blink, and see if you can get it to suddenly appear as a crate, a yellow crate sitting on this um, black and white tray, as it were, and suddenly appearing, and it's extraordinary. But if you're looking at the book without not through a camera, you actually have to close one eye on each of these models to make them suddenly appear three-dimensional and going the other way. So that's a, a marvellous book, which I've thoroughly enjoyed over the many years that I've been collecting this array of fun books. These are all what I call fun books, but um, some of them are optical, some of them are... Ooh, anyway, you'll see the contrast. This is a marvellous artist I've um, never met, and I wish I could, because he's done, he's, he's done wonderful work painting bits of his body in the, to make it look like things, and some of it is fantastic. I love that one there. He's painted the bottom of his heel there to make it look like a face. And my favourite one, I think, is this one here, which is very clever. Look at this. There's his actual outline, and he's blacked it. He's done blacking all around there like that, as if his line of his head is really this bit here, but it's not. It's actually further out, as if there's another person, a black, a black head behind his... something like that. And this is even cleverer, because he's done it so that if I put my hand over here, you're now seeing a second face. There's the eye, and there's a the nose <laughs> of, of, of another person pointing the other direction. Extraordinary. So these artists, painting body artists who are taken to a high level, are really quite something because they do, oh, those are charming, aren't they? Little toes peeping out like a family of children. So that's, that's been a very nice book to be able to show people. All these ones are ones which I've taken to children's parties over the years because they're such fun to look at. This one does lovely things with his hands, and I think particularly the fingers. He does, they're, they're, that's supposed to be the opening of, of, the, of the book, as it were. He's painted it white. And there's the show, and then the first one I really like is this, which is the, um, well, there's a, there's, a, there's a chorus, which is very nice. And the one I like, is, I think, best is, the, is the, uh, the conductor, the musical conductor. Very, very clever, very clever stuff, and, and some charming, charming pictures. So some of them quite bizarre and great fun. So that's been a nice book, again, to show children at parties. This is a bit specialised. There's only a few things which are photogenic. The other ones you really have to study. He's a, it's a Dutch chef I've never met, but he's got a most inventive mind. And the two pictures I like best on this is this one here, where he's in an art gallery. I don't know how he managed to do that. Perhaps it's just a false wall. It looks like an art gallery, but there's actually a screen there. He put his head into the picture as if he's seeing into another world. Very charming idea, that. So. He's very, very good at inventing this stuff. And this one just shows what it is like to have a mortgage on a house when you've, it's bearing on your back as a load you've got to carry. A per person with his house on mortgage and he's got to bear the burden of paying the, back, the, the loan to get it. So lots of little bits and pieces in that one there. This one hasn't got anything like that. It's actually a catalogue book from Japan. And because I love spinning tops, I was amazed to find uh, absolute... Um, 
huge range of, of Japanese tops over, what, a few hundred years of the, some of the spinning tops, the, the colour ones. The, what excites me about these is they're all mechanical. They do. They use the force of friction and of spinning to do extraordinary things. I've got perhaps a dozen of these in my collection. Very, very few, considering how many the Japanese have been made over the years. And this is an absolute. It makes me almost my mouth water when I see things like this because there's such extraordinary things contained in this book. And I can't read any of the text, but the pictures are just superb. And the invention of some of this stuff is out of this world. There's another little passion of mine which is sort of topiary, if it's interesting and well made and well done. And there's a good, a good example in here of what I, what I like in topiary is when they have a, the, the gardens are nice, but look at this one here where they've actually carved on the top of the tree as part of the tree originally uh, and created a creature on top of the tree as if, it, if it's a bird in flight and having a rest. And when I went through my collection of other papers, I came across a particularly good type of um, topiary which I just love. This is such a lovely idea. It's somewhere in, uh, in, in, in uh, I think, eastern states, the United States. What's, what's good about this is you think of the time taken to, to make this bit of art. You've got to actually grow this for 10 years, probably, from the time you put the little thing in, probably longer than that. And you've even, look, we've even got the horse and the hounds. Here's, here's the rider on the horse with the hounds to chase after the fox. They don't show the fox, but you've got three hedges here clipped in the form of hunting dogs and the man on the horse is running after them to do a bit of fox hunting. So that's topiary gone to a very, very high level. So wonderful stuff there. There's an extraordinary artist here, Istvan Banya. I think he's he's made several books actually, but this is one the first one he produced and it's I think my favourite because it's the one I came across first. It's called Zoom. It just does a huge zoom from something at very small scale to something as, as, as big as the universe. So you look at that and say, well, it's a bit of pretty something like that, but what is it? Well, the answer is when you draw back the camera, which you don't need to do, you just turn over the page, that's what you're looking at, the comb of the cock. And then you go back one more, you realise the cock is sitting on it, and there's a little boy there, and this is obviously a figure of a boy, because it's not real, it's, it's got a jigsaw. And sure enough, when you come back far enough, you find it's actually part of a little building set with a girl playing. There we are, that's the little play, she's actually playing with it. And then it zooms and zooms back and back. That is part of a poster, which is not real either. There we are. So, and there's bigger hands, and this is part of a book here, and that's not real because etc. And eventually you start coming to the uh, pilot taking off and taking you up into space, and finally you come away from the Earth and you're left with Mother Earth and a distant spot and a distance. So that really is a huge zoom all the way from that very first page, which is something very, very small in comparison. But it's a, it's a normal sized thing that you'd be able to recognize if you looked at it. So a clever, clever one, that. This is something extraordinary. Now look at this. This chap does extraordinary things with mirrors and so on, and some of it is difficult to follow, to be honest. But there's one at the back here, which I think is quite outstanding, because I've never seen the effect, I know of the effect, but never seen it done so well. And it's this mixture here. So it's a bit of wood carving. You see all these, got all the, um, the bits and chips he's been taking off there. He hasn't cleared them up just to show it's, there we are, the, 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 the chisels. And what happens is, I can see exactly what that is, but you can't. But if I turn the thing round, this will become into relief, and suddenly you see... <gasps> There's a deer, a stag with horns on it there, dancing of the forest. And to put it the other way, it's called the Phantom of the Forest. And now he disappears. It's hard to see because it's all in hollow form, which is not really good enough, near enough to real life for you to understand. And as soon as I turn it round again, this three-dimensional object suddenly sticks up and becomes real once more. Wonderful. So what a, a marvellous thing to do. And what a book that is with all the others to... Um, to amuse and, and, and intrigue me. So something I've really enjoyed over my life, finding the unusual book. This is a lovely example.